Today on Dr. Phil. I always dream that I'm flying. Flying dreams can mean that you're trying to escape a situation. What are the five most common dreams? My husband is dreaming that I'm cheating. Are you kind of insecure? Well, maybe a little bit. What do your dreams reveal? When we land, I'm the only one that's still alive. Have you lost people close to you in your life? Find out Dr. Phil's biggest nightmare. <laughs> This is going to be a changing day in your life. Have a good show, everybody. Here we go. It matters to you. That's what I want to talk about. Are you ready to move? Let's do it. Let's do it. What the? What, what is this? A, a test? I'm supposed to be doing a show. How am I going to do a show with no teeth? <laughs> this is turning into a real nightmare. This is cool. Well, there's my studio. I, I need to be down there starting the show. Whoa! Hey, whoa! Dr. Phil, Dr. Phil, wake up, you're on. Whoop. Fly it, fly it. saw the top five most common dreams and nightmares. Now, we asked the audience to keep a dream journal and bring it to the show. So, I'm just curious, did anybody do that? Yeah? So, all right, let's talk to a few of you guys. So, what did you, what did you come up with? What was, your, what was your main thing? Let me ask you in the blue shirt. I always dream that I'm flying, and the dream starts out, and it's awesome. You know, I'm zooming around, and then by the end of the dream, I'm just kind of bouncing along the floor. Oh, you bounce on the floor. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, yes. how about you? Mine's not that exciting. I just dream about an ex-fiance coming back and wanting to be with me. Uh, yeah? <laughs> He's crazy about me. <laughs> of course he is. I mean, that's what he would be. So do you hook up in the dream? Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, all right, did you have a dream? Yes. What was um, it? I've actually had a recurring dream since my adolescence, and I'm in this beautiful paradise setting. Everything's beautiful, and out of nowhere comes this huge plane, crashes, chaos, everything, and I'm the only one that's worried. You're the only and that's one it. that's worried? And no worried? one else is worried, and sometimes a plane comes and it bounces off the sidewalk. It's always a beautiful tropical setting, and then I wake up, and that's pretty much it. Interesting. We're going to talk about planes later in the show. What was your dream? Well, my, my dream was uh, I would be in a gunfight, and I would actually get shot, and I could taste and smell the blood in my dream. So be re very realistic. Really? Yeah. Okay, yeah. we'll talk about that. All right. <laughs> All right, find out today what your dreams may be trying to tell you. Now, you can go to DrPhil.com right now and take our dream interpretation quiz. You can do it while you watch the rest of the show and learn what your dreams might reveal about you. Don't you to miss the show, just click it up and you can kind of do it as you go along. Now, Inception, the summer blockbuster, has people talking about dream analysis. Now, Jamie dreams that his wife is cheating on him, then he wakes up, but it doesn't stop there. Take a look. The problem that my husband, uh, Jamie, and I are having right now is that he's dreaming that I'm cheating. The dreams are always about her and a guy she dated. Jamie's had dreams that I was in our living room with my ex, having sex on my sofa, and he walks in, and I act as if he's not there. I woke up in the middle of the night looking at her, ready to push her out the bed, mad, because, you know, I had this dream. 
you know, of her bringing this man into my home. Oh, I was steamed, pretty steamed about it. I said, what did I do? I haven't done anything. He goes, yeah, but I'm just trying to figure out, why am I dreaming that? Donna tells me that she has no feeling for this guy. It's over. She's done. Yet, when I have these dreams, it kind of gives me that doubt. I reassure Jamie that everything is good, but he's not buying it. I think the dreams are winning. Okay, now, let me get this right. You're not dreaming this. Not me. You're dreaming it. Yes. About you. Yes. yes. And you wake up and what? And I'll be ready to push her off the bed because I'll be mad because she's... It'd be mostly about her and her, one of her ex guys she dated. Well, why don't you push yourself out of the bed? It's exactly. your dream. Exactly. That's You're what having the dream. You de- are you, you, I'm not dreaming. I'm having fun. I'm asleep. <laughs> so you, but you really wake up upset. Yes. So what? You, how do you? How do you figure that? Because she's not in. She's not dreaming this. You're dreaming it. Mm-hmm. This is all about you. So why are you mad at her? Because it'd be about her cheating on me. But it's you doing it. <laughs> she yeah. should be mad at you for dreaming bad things exactly. about her, not you mad at her for you dreaming bad things about her. Did you get that? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Did you get, I mean... Yeah, yeah, I get it, but still, you know, that's like, you know, most married men, that's the worst thing they, they want is to think that another man is sharing the love of their life, you know, and to dream about it is is... And, well, and it's like kind of vivid and all that too, but some men would be glad for the help. <laughs> okay. Well, I don't me. need any help. <laughs> Not me, of course. I'm just speculating about some men. All right. The dreams are bad. But you stay mad all day. Pretty much. Yes. Okay. Now, come on. Has somebody told you that your dreams are telling you what you may be suppressing while you're awake? That you're, maybe this is a clue, a warning? I mean, what, what do you say to yourself that justifies you being mad? I don't know. I, I just, it's like, it's too real, you know? So I feel like I have the right to be mad, you know? So when I question her about it, and of course she gets frustrated about it, and... Um, we'll be folding clothes, and he'll just stop and look at me and say, do you want to tell me something? <laughs> I'm like, about what? And he goes, I mean, come on. You were on the sofa. You were in the comforter. I mean, you just rolled over and looked at me. I said, I'm oh, having sex home. with him. Oh, so you're there. Oh, yeah, yeah. I walk in the room, and they, yeah. they get together. And, and they just look at you? Look at me and say, oh, you made it home. And... <laughs> Who does yeah. that? <laughs> yeah, you are dreaming this. Just let me tell you. If I was there and you walked in the room, I wouldn't be saying welcome home. <laughs> okay, but now, seriously... Are you telling yourself that this is your subconscious trying to tell you something? Yes. So you're actually thinking that you've missed something. So I assume this is a recent boyfriend that it's still a raw thing for him, like, what, two weeks ago, a month ago? Are you kidding me? No, it's not recent. We've been married for over 20 years. So this boyfriend is is 20-plus years. Yes, yes, but... He just feels like things weren't resolved and, right. you know, so he feels like there's always <clears throat> might a chance. Be chatting on the email, texting, something. I'm not doing that. Have you found any text? No. Have you found any emails? I don't check them. Have you found any something? <laughs> Nothing. She's never given me any, re- any reason to even assume that she is, but for some reason I keep having these dreams, you know? Okay. Are, and, you, um, are you kind of insecure? I don't, I like to think I'm confident that I kind of got her on lock, you know, but at the same time, you know, I still have these dreams. And so you don't think you're insecure? I don't think so. Tell the truth. Well, maybe a little bit. <laughs> yeah. So he pretty much does what you tell him. Yep. No. So why don't you... you. So why don't you tell him to quit having his dreams? I did that. It didn't work. When you walk in the room and you see him there, how how do you feel? Oh, I get angry, real angry, right away. You you get angry right away? Right away. Does it feel good to be angry? No, it doesn't. Do you feel powerless? Um, Pretty much, yes. So does he wake up pushing on you? Well, basically... um... I wake up to him staring at me. I can feel it. He's always on this right elbow, and he goes, I am so mad at you. I'm like, 
what now? He goes, you walked in the house with this, and he starts telling me everything, how I walked in the house with the baby. And I said, baby? What baby? Our kids are grown. And I'm like, what baby? He goes, you walked in the house with the baby. Mm -hmm. And I said, whose baby is that? And you said, oh, it's my ex baby. And I went and picked him up and he's downstairs. I'm with him now. I said, just like that. So, and he's mad, really mad. Okay, we'll talk about this. So what does it mean <laughs> when you and, or your spouse, either one, has a cheating dream? Mm -hmm. The key to this dream when we come back. Monday on an all new Dr. Phil. It's Avery's first birthday. Repeat after me. You can't change what you don't acknowledge. <laughs> Which grandparent? This is good for you. That's my screen. Is the better babysitter. All right, good match. Plus, she's lost over 100 pounds. I think she looks good. <laughs> but hasn't gained enough compliments from her husband. Do not pause yeah. when I ask you this stuff. <laughs> I am lobbing these softballs, buddy. <laughs> That's Monday. The dreams uh, affect our marriage in a lot of different ways because it kind of makes me think that he doesn't trust me at all. My dreams are getting on her nerves. I want to tell her about most of them, but then I don't. If I told her about all the dreams, we'd probably be divorced. Okay, well, I'm here with Donna and Jamie, and Donna is getting in trouble for sleeping, <laughs> apparently, because while she's sleeping, her husband is also sleeping, but he's dreaming that she's having an affair in, her, in his dream. Not her dream, his dream. She's not dreaming about having an affair. He's dreaming about her having an affair, and he wakes up mad at her. Now, you're not the only ones that do this. You know, no. you, you haven't invented this. Okay. So, Daniel, where are you? What is your dream? My dream started occurring after she started telling me that, you know, yeah, I'm, exactly. I'm dreaming of my ex. But I've had this problem for a long time. Like, I actually lost, I actually lost the relationship <laughs> because I'm dreaming of that ex. So I wake up and I'm dreaming about that. Ex. So you've been doing this a long time. Yes, and it's causing me, it caused me a, a relationship. So I'm sort of like traumatized because he knows about it now and, and I'm afraid that I'm going to wake up and might, you know, splurt out the wrong name because I'm still in my dream. Yeah, that would be bad. And that happened to me before, but I tell him, I tell him about my dreams because I feel really guilty when I wake up. All right. So you feel better now? Well, sort of, kind of. See, she's not dreaming about her ex. Right. You are. And down here, she's actually dreaming about her ex. Yeah, well, see, that's a whole different issue right there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, you wouldn't handle that well at all. Not at all. No, that would be really bad. All right, look, I called in some reinforcements here to help. Cynthia Richmond is a behavioral therapist and has interpreted over 35,000 dreams for the Los Angeles Times in her column. And she's written Dream Power, How to Use Your Night Dreams to Change Your Life. And Dr. Barrett is a Harvard psychologist and researcher who has helped write the Encyclopedia on Dreams. Now, all right, let me just ask you guys. First off, what's your take on what's happening up here? Well, it, it's irrational to blame your wife for your dreams, so you kind of have to start with that. It, very few dreams are actually literal. You do want to rule that out first, and I'm sure you asked her, and she said, no, that should be the end of that. Dreams are symbolic, and typically when you're feeling betrayed in your dream, you have to ask yourself, where in my life do I feel betrayed, or do I feel that I am betraying someone, and see what answers bubble up for that. Does that, okay, your wife's got something on that. <laughs> what does that mean to you? The question. Well, um, when you said um, is he betraying someone? You know, well, the first person I thought about was me because sometimes when I get upset, I'll say, is it really me or is it you? You have a story to tell? Yeah. And I want to hear the story. So it kind of, I kind of flipped the script on him because I want answers because, you know, I'm not doing anything. And he says, well, you flirt and you, you know, you're always talking to guys and all that stuff. But, hey, I just got a big personality. So yes. I'm not yeah. doing anything. Dr. Barrett, <laughs> what do you think about this? Well, I think that although dreams are very vivid and they, they do wake us up with the feeling in the dream, it, it's not just automatic that when you have a dream like that, 
it has to carry over into waking suspicion. I've heard people tell almost the same dream and, and end up saying, it's such a relief to wake up and realize that she wouldn't really do that, or, you know, I'm so glad I'm with someone I, I trust. So I think that the waking jealousy is, is kind of a problem in and of itself, and I'd, you know, I do a little more thinking about just if, if something triggers it that, you know, what nights you happen to have that dream, have you felt a little insulted or put down somewhere else out in the work world? Or is there just, you know, what, what's stirring up insecurity? But also jealousy is so toxic that if you can just take your emphasis off that and start thinking about what you do like in the relationship, why you're together in the first place, if there is anything else you could be doing to make things more fun, maybe even telling yourself what you'd like to be dreaming about, like the best times or the good times between the two of, of you. Sometimes just focusing on the positive makes some of the bad begin to fade well, away. Well, you know, when I have a dream I don't like, the first thing I think about when I wake up in the morning is, oh man, I'm glad that was just a dream. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I wake up like I'm totally free. It's like, wow, that was a dream, good deal, I am so out of here, and then I'm gone. So I mean, that you can focus on the positives. You can, yeah. the problem is that it's recurring for him, so there's something mm -hmm. that's unresolved that he needs to take a look yeah. at. Dr. Barrett, what do you say to this young lady behind you that uh, <laughs> is dreaming about Swear I won't forget this, why do I regret this? In my mind reckless, thoughts are feeling endless Sitting up I'm breathless, anxiety's infectious I feel so defenseless, betrayed and embarrassed I hate being open, I hate being broken I feel like an ocean filled up with emotion Anger ain't a potion, rub it on like lotion I can feel it soaking, reopen, the scars have awoken I can't move on till I let go I feel so lost, never at home Need to be strong, every breath hold Cause I can't move on till I let go I can't move on till I let go I feel so lost, never at home Need to be strong, every breath hold Cause I can't move on till I let go
ex vividly and passionately. I don't really think about my ex. I'm not like, you know, I don't want to be with him or anything. I'm really happy with Daniel. I'm not sure why I keep dreaming about my ex. Even though you much prefer being with Daniel, is there anything from that past relationship that you're missing and wish you could bring into your current life? Or maybe just something from that time and place in your life? Often early loves have a kind of carefree, you know, youthful innocence. So, so it may be that that time or person or relationship kind of represents something, something else. I never thought about that. I never saw it in that way. Another thing you can do is there's something called dream incubation, where as you fall asleep, you ask your, your dreaming mind particular questions or to dream on a topic. And you could tell yourself, you know, if I, if I have that dream of my ex tonight, I want to ask him, why am I still dreaming about you? Or what I do wish I, need I to could control my go? dream and do that. Well, well you if can. you self suggest, yeah. a lot of people can learn to. If just as you're falling asleep, you tell yourself, tonight I want to ask, why are, why are why? you coming around? The point is that the ex boyfriend is now <laughs> symbolic for right. what you associate with him and the characteristics of that relationship. Okay. Not for him. Right. And you can even do what um, Dr. Barrett suggested and bring him into your mind's eye before you go to sleep. Okay. Bring him in and say, what is it that I need to understand about what you represent to me right. in my dream state? And very likely you can clean that out. Oh, I, thank you so much. Okay, and, and you need to think about the same thing here because particularly right when you're falling asleep, you are highly suggestible even to yourself. Mm -hmm. And so you can talk to yourself about what you want to introduce to the dream about what you might like to ask her in the dream or what you might like to ask of yourself in the dream. We're not totally passengers uh, in our dream state. We can program some things into it. It doesn't work every time and it, it sometimes is a process. Now we're going to take a break. She wakes up to her fiance slapping her and digging into her chest. We're going to talk about what's happening in his dreams when we come back. Tuesday on an all-new Dr. Phil. Dr. Phil's most frustrating parent. The girls are doing good at home. Are back. Did she scream at you and attack you? She did. When I That's what you call the girls are doing no. pretty good. That's Tuesday. Well, as you just saw, vivid dreams can get you right up and out of bed. Now, that's what's happening to Rick and Nanette. Now, he is slapping, yelling, grabbing Nanette's skin with fingernails, all while sleeping. Hi, Dr. Phil. This is Nanette, and my fiancé has been having a lot of violent dreams. A few of them have kept me up very, very late. I get punched and pushed and um, shoved. At one point I was sleeping and all of a sudden these hands come at me and woke me up very shockingly, of course, and I had four prints, one on each side of my chest like this. Could you help me explain what these dreams actually mean? And obviously he wakes you up. Oh, yeah. You come full alert immediately because you're under... Full alert and... Um, are his eyes open? I don't see usually because it's dark, but a lot of times it's very physical things, but then very funny things that he does. So I'd never know what to expect. It's like I'm the one that wants to get some sleep because he, his dreams usually start at 12 and they go to 4. So like in that, that time frame is when it all happens. One time it would be like in the middle of the night you hear... And, you know, I'm dead sleep, and I'm like, what's going on? And then all of a sudden, you know, he'll do that to my leg, and he's killing mosquitoes and, you know, saving the world. So, <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know what to expect. I'm, I'm okay, trying you, to get a good night's rest. Oh. I talk, <laughs> yeah, I do. I talk the next day. I explain, do you remember this? No, I mean, during this, when he wakes you up, do you ever talk to him while he's asleep? Uh, I talk to him and ask oh, yeah. him, honey, uh, are you okay? What are you doing? He's uh, a cyclist. And so a lot of times his feet are going like this and then he's going faster. And so they're going like this more and he's kicking and kicking and kicking. It's getting faster and faster. So it's sort of like 
it's always something physical usually that he's doing okay and do you ever wake him up uh, I do. Just I do calm? wake him up. No, I wake him up because I'm thinking, you know, what's going to happen next? Is it going to escalate? Uh, and sometimes I wake up because I'm laughing because of what his dreaming is, and he's okay. speaking things. Do you wake up rested? Uh, no. Okay, so you don't. Wake I wake up, up and I see her and my daughter's face looking at me, and I'm going, <laughs> "What are you doing?" <laughs> Sometimes. I have that happened once or twice. There are a number of ways that you can think about this, and a number of ways that it could be explained. But when I hear something like this, the first thing that I want to do is, is always have the person rule out certain things that might need uh, more attention. I mean, this could be d just a, a dream cycle and a dream pattern that you're in, but it could be something... Uh, that's more serious and, and has a medical basis to it. There's, there's something called REM behavior disorder. It's a rapid eye movement is the stage of sleep uh -huh. where it's very reparative and it's, it, it's a time when you're likely to dream. Um, but you can have a disorder in there that could involve some type of, of neurological involvement. Uh, Dr. Barrett, let's talk about this a, a little bit. This is serious. During REM sleep, we're normally paralyzed exactly so we don't act out our dreams. And people, it's called rapid eye movement sleep because our eyes move frantically doing everything that they're doing in the dream, but the rest of our body isn't moving. And in a few people, that paralysis lessens and people begin to act out their dreams. I would want to err on the side of caution and really have you call a sleep clinic today to make an appointment and before. And they, they'll have you in, they'll take a more elaborate history, they'll probably do some other tests, and then they'll have you sleep in a sleep lab with EEG electrodes to see what's going on in your brain. If this is uh, something that has a, a, a neurological basis, a, a, a sleep disorder basis to it, you could hurt yourself or someone else purely by accident. It, it's not that mm -hmm. you're afraid you're going to get up and do something I intentional, but you, you can fall, you can hit your, you know, catch your temple on the side of a, mm -hmm. of a, of a table. He could, he could hurt you in, in, uh, unintentionally. Uh, but that's why it's, it's really important that if it is this disorder that, that you have it evaluated because it is something uh, for which there are remedies available uh, that would have a pretty good prognosis if that's the case, true? Yeah, there are tired? medications that help that a lot. Why well, he, he not... says he is tired. One of the well, first I things I asked him was, are you waking up uh -huh. rested? And he said, no, not at all. No, that's but a very he good does, point as well. But he does just the it. sleep deprivation could be causing the brain chemistry issue. It might not be a disorder. It might just it's... be that you need to learn how to get a really good night's sleep. Seriously. This needs to be evaluated uh, with, the, with the proper folks, and, and we're going to guide you in that direction, okay? We'll help okay. you with that. All right, we all share some common dreams. So next, we're going to hear what others are dreaming about and why, as this audience gets their dreams analyzed. We'll be right back. We create the world of the dream bring the subject into that dream and they fill it with their secrets then you break in and steal it well it's not strictly speaking legal it's called inception well that was a scene from the mind-bending summer hit inception now we're talking about dreams today and uh, dream interpreter Cynthia Richmond is here to help and uh, we've got Dr. Deidre Barrett is here as well. And we're kind of trying to figure out what these dreams mean, how it all comes together. Now, Rosie and Jennifer uh, have some recurring dreams. So you guys come up. Okay. Hi. All right. I'm Jennifer. How you doing? Good. Rosie, how are you? Tell me your dream. I have a dream that I'm fighting, but I can only move in slow motion. Right. And sometimes I'm being attacked by tigers or enemies, bad guys, and I can't move. And then I realize I'm in the dream, but then I am trapped and I can't wake up. Okay. So a tiger. Yeah. Okay. D do you see the tiger? I, I know you see this tiger, but I mean, do you, 
Do, do you see the tiger as a, as a threat at the time? Yeah, it's running behind me at full speed, right. and I can only run in slow motion. Okay, so it's a really slow tiger? It's a really fast tiger. Well, no, you're in slow motion. I'm, I'm only in slow motion. But the tiger's really it, fast. It's coming up on me. Okay, yeah. now let's talk about this. And Dr. Phil, that's a pretty common phenomenon that during the sleep paralysis we were just talking about, the dreamer is partially awake, sometimes partially sleeps, has the idea they want to run or yell and are unable, unable to do it. But the other thing about dreams, and even though every dream is specific to the dreamer, there's some unconscious collective uh, ideas about what symbols mean and any cat can represent feminine power a big cat a fierce cat can represent extreme feminine power so i would ask you are you afraid of your own power mm, that's actually really good i never thought of that <laughs> yeah maybe a little bit what does that mean to you what do you mean you're um, afraid of your own power well should i be afraid <laughs> <laughs> no you shouldn't dr bell um well sometimes i think i'm afraid to be feminine or be like a lady. I don't know. I, I have a lot of weird conceptions because I grew up in a really conservative family. So a lot of things that I really embrace and think are feminine, you know, my dad, who's really conservative and old school, just wants to shut me down, shut down, because he sees it as a threat. And he was always afraid of his little girls growing up. So that makes a lot of sense, actually. So what you can do with that, so you stop having this recurring dream about the tiger chasing you, is bring a tiger into your mind's eye and ask it, what can I do to be more comfortable being my full, powerful self? I thought you were gonna say bring a tiger. <laughs> see, see, see tiger as, as, a, as a, um, sort of an archetype of your own personal power and see how you can take steps to feel more comfortable ex expressing yourself that way. Okay, thank you. The whole point is to use the dream. I mean, don't be afraid of it. Ask yourself, you know, what's, is there a message here? Is there something that this is telling me? Is there something I can do about this that makes me better in my waking life. What's your dream? I've been dreaming for over 20 years that I am in a plane and I'm seat belted in and all of a sudden I feel the plane start to lurch and spin and it's literally slow motion but then all of a sudden the plane will break in half right in front of me mm -hmm. and I feel every turn and twist. I, I can remember the sounds, I can remember the feelings as I'm going to the ground but the key is when we, when we land I'm the only one that's still alive. And I rush around trying to wake everyone up and revive them. And it's, it's terrorizing. And it's been happening for over 20 years. And it's pretty much Remember? the same every time? Sometimes, no. Sometimes it's a car and I'm going over a cliff. Sometimes it's a roller coaster or a Ferris wheel, but usually it's a plane. Does it always involve falling? Yes. Is everybody always dead yes. but you? Every time. And, and how do you feel when, when you're alive and everybody else is dead? I am powerless and I'm incapable of waking them up and I become, or I'm sorry, uh, reviving them and I literally become, I become hysterical and I, I'm trying to move them and I'm trying to make them stand and I'm, I'm trying to get them to come back to life and I, I literally become hysterical. It's the best way I can put it. I wake up crying, I wake up shaking and the weird thing is I love to fly and I fly for a living all the time so I'm not yeah. afraid of that. Have you lost people close to you in your life? I lost my dad four years ago. Mm -hmm. And um, how, how did he pass? He actually had cancer, and oh. it was sudden, very sudden, six days. So. Did you have an opportunity to talk with him before you lost him? I did. I actually did. And uh, did you get to say what you wanted to yeah, say? Were you with him when he passed? Yeah, I did. And I was actually the sort of the executor of the family at that point, you know, with the doctors sort of in between. So, yeah, it was actually... <laughs> If you're going to go, it was a beautiful way to go, surrounded by family, so yeah. What do you guys have to say? Well, what I'm struck by is the car crash and plane crash dreams are so common, but your specific variation is you're not concerned about yourself in what I hear. It, it's, the, it's the other people. You have to save other people. Yep. And you just said as your dad was dying that you were sort of the executor for the family. Mm -hmm. So I wonder if you have a lot of waking life situations where either you really have to or you feel like you have to be taking all responsibility for lots of other people. Yeah, I think there's something there. I have been the achiever in the family my whole life, known as being the achiever. And I think there's something there in making sure that I do it right, I'm in control, I'm, I'm hitting the goals. I think there might be something there, so I'm controlling 
maybe? I mean, it sounds like the falling comes from your real experience, but that quality of being concerned about everybody else, I mean, it must be very gratifying to be the achiever and caretaker in the family, but it sounds like there's something that's kind of overwhelming. I was taking on a new job, actually. Oh. I was mm -hmm. taking on a huge responsibility, and which would ultimately lead to where I am today in my mm -hmm. career. So that might have been something there, that I was, I was stepping into a role that I probably wasn't as prepared for as the hiring manager thought, but mm -hmm. I was stepping into that as an adult, and I was still a college student, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, if you had that sense inside that you might not be as qualified, that's a great deal of pressure to put on yourself at mm -hmm. 19. I would work with you on the, on the idea of the various vehicles, too, because there's something significant about that, but it's not a quick, it's not a quick answer, necessarily. Right. But I'm wondering you know, what would happen, because I, I know... A, a real motivator, a real fuel in, in a lot of dream scenarios is anxiety, mm -hmm. you know, where you feel overwhelmed in some way. And so we sometimes feel paralysis, we sometimes feel helplessness, and anxiety can be a big factor. And, uh, you know, you, you got into a job where you said you were kind of over your head from the beginning. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes we can go through our whole life feeling like we're one step ahead of being found out. Mm -hmm. I'm not really as competent as everybody thinks I am. I'm not as smart as everybody thinks I am. Right. I'm not as good as everybody thinks I am. Yeah. And I'm just one step ahead of being found out. Right. And if you feel like that sometimes in a dream, you could very well feel like you're, you're falling from where you shouldn't be. I think I have this this need to always sort of do it right and fix it and when things fall apart I'm the one that comes in and saves the day and I've always been that person and I think there might be something there too that I can't save the day okay here's a tough question a meaningful question can our dreams be premonitions next we're gonna see if yours predict the future we'll be right back Dr. Phil, when I was a kid, I used to have these dreams, premonition-type dreams, that my dad passed away. And a few years ago, it did happen, pretty close to the same way I had dreamt about it a long time ago. I have a reoccurring dream that somebody really close to me has a heart attack, and I haven't told them. Should I be afraid of it coming true because of my past premonition dreams? Is this a... A vivid dream for you? It's a powerful dream? Yes. It and gets... you know who the person is? Mm-hmm. It's the same same person every time I have the dream. Have you, have you said anything to the person? Uh, recently, I told the person that I was worried about them. I know that they're under a tremendous amount of stress. What other premonitions have you had that came true? Um, I had my very first one, and it's always when I'm away. It's not never when I'm home. My very first one when I was nine years old, I went away with my friend's family and I had a nightmare that my rabbit froze to death. We were in the snow. I didn't live in the snow at the time, but we were visiting and I called my mom that night because I couldn't go back to sleep and I said, please check on Bashful, my rabbit. And my mom put my dad on the phone and then my dad put my brother on the phone and my brother said, I'm sorry, Jay, but Bashful passed away. We don't know what happened. So we got an autopsy and he actually froze that night to death. Um, so I, that was the first one. I had another dream that my cat got run over by a car, and sure enough, two days later, my cat did get run over by a car and died. Um, I have had dream journals, and I've logged my dreams for the last over 10 years. I have boxes of dreams. Um, I don't know why I have these dreams, and I don't, I don't know what it means. If I was your friend and you were having this premonition about me, I would want to know it. If, particularly if you really believe that you do have some premonition uh, value to your dreams, I would want to know that, and you would feel really bad if you didn't say something and he did have a heart attack. Because when you go to him now and say, look, I need to tell you that I, I don't want to creep you out, but I do kind of have these dreams sometimes that come true, and I'd really, really encourage you, because I love and care about you, to go get checked up, to, I mean, to go get an evaluation I think you would feel better and he would feel better and if and if he did like drop dead of a heart attack that could have been prevented and he hadn't said something then you would feel really bad of course so that the danger of scaring him versus not seems to be trivial compared to the downside otherwise so I would tell him okay what, what do you yeah, think I, I agree with that I talked to my mom about it recently and told her and she said that she thinks it's a good idea to tell him as well
Yeah, well, your mother's right. <laughs> Moms uh, are always right. So what do you guys say about this? In the language of dreams, death is very often associated with um, transformation, metamorphosis. Not very many dreams are literal. So there's always a symbolic aspect, and if you can look at it uh, logically first, rule that out, you know, but then look at it symbolically, and what could it mean? Um, you, you might have picked up in a subconscious level that uh, it was a very cold night where you were, and you mm -hmm. worried about your, your rabbit. You might have, uh, you know, the cat might have got out one day and you had a conscious thought or subconscious thought, oh, I don't want that to happen again. He could get ran over. So we take in data from a lot of resources in our subconscious state that come out in the dream state. So the bottom line is you can't make something happen because you dreamt about it. And I want to reassure you about that. <laughs> Thank you. That. <laughs> that was something I worried about sometimes. Mm -hmm. no. no, it's... Trust me, that's highly unlikely. <laughs> okay, just real quickly, because I know a lot of people have asked about this. I want to get you guys to give us a sense of what some of the most common dreams are typically interpreted about. Unprepared for a test. What does that generally mean? One of the most common dreams that people have, you illustrated it for us in the beginning, it means there's a mild anxiety that I am not as prepared as I'd like to be, and I feel that I'm going to be judged or tested harshly, and it's going to have an effect on me. So but maybe the night before you meet your new future in-laws, you might have that dream because you expect you're anxious about a result. Partially exposed in public, okay. where we dream about, like I had on boxer shorts. That was a good look for you, Dr. Yeah, Trump. there wasn't yeah. really... <laughs> There wasn't really an audience here at the time, okay? It usually means we don't feel prepared for something. We haven't taken all the precautions we can. But if you're naked, it can also mean that you're telling the truth. You're not covering anything up. How about flying? Flying dreams are some of the most popular dreams that people look forward to and love. I loved yours very, very much. It can mean that you want a perspective. You need a higher place to get a perspective on a situation, a problem, a dilemma. Or it can mean that you're trying to escape a situation, leave earthly gravity to get a little break from something. Yeah, how many of you have had a flying dream where you were flying like that? Well, that's a fair amount of you. All right, how about falling? Cause we, yeah, because really, it, we all have that sense, yeah. and sometimes we're not actually in a dream when that happens. We just think we are. But anyway, let's talk about falling. That's true as well. That's another point. But falling can be a sense that we don't know where we stand. We don't have a firm foundation. So if you've heard a rumor that your corporation is going to merge with another and there's going to be layoffs, you might have a falling dream because you don't have a firm foundation in your life at that time. Mm -hmm. How about this teeth falling out? They have to do with appearance and they have to do with communication. They have to do with being able to sing your teeth into something meaning I have enough information to make a choice in this dilemma so those types of things yeah I've never actually had the dream of my teeth falling out <laughs> but after we did this I had the dream of shoe polish in my mouth because <laughs> uh, it was really bad all right guess what your pets dream too amazing footage of a dog's nightmare caught on tape when we come back Okay, now Marina took this video of her dog in what looks like a dream turned into a nightmare. She's on the phone. Marina, are you there? Yes, I am. Hi, Phil. Hi. Is this a common thing with your dog? Yes, she's been doing that since she was born. Okay, uh, just all along. What kind of dog is that? Well, she's a uh, lab mix of some sort. We uh, got her from the shelter, so we're not exactly sure. Okay. Well, uh, God bless you for rescuing a dog from a shelter, by the way. Now, you came up with a solution to protect Biscuit the next time she runs into the wall, correct? Yes, I did. <laughs> so, right. now, how old is the dog at this point? Well, she's 14 now, but she's very physically fit. Oh, wow. She certainly is, I guess, because she gets a lot of exercise <laughs> while she's sleeping. She does. Have, um... <laughs> Have you had the dog to the vet and, and had the dog evaluated? Yes. In fact, her vet has seen all of her footage. Uh, she does this every time she falls asleep. Really? Uh, so he, he, she's perfectly fine. Uh, yeah, he, he, he giggles at it just like everyone else does. So. 
Well, because if this dog was one or two years old, I would be telling you that there likely is some neurological involvement here and that the dog should be checked. But if this dog is this healthy at 14 years of age, despite running in to the wall, I, I mean, basically it's working. Thank you for sharing this with us. I really enjoyed it. Thank you. All right, we'll be right back. Well, the dream test is on drphil.com, so you can go there and take that. We'll have more dream symbols and their meanings on the website. And I'll bet if you're having a recurring dream or something with a really clear symbol, we'll have something there that tells you a little bit more about it. And right now on our message boards, people are sharing their dreams. So find out if you've had any of the same ones. Cynthia, thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. Dr. Barrett. Thank you for being here. Thanks to all of my guests today for sharing your dreams. See you later. Bye.